everyone. Uh, welcome aboard. Happy New Week to you. I sincerely trust you had a wonderful weekend and are now refreshed, ready to go again. And it's Trading Buddies Monday style, where Ash will be joining you very, very shortly. He does have to go early. I do know that he's got uh, an appointment. Thank you, Marlon. Um, so as I was saying, uh, welcome aboard, everyone. Happy New Week to you. Ash will be joining me very, very shortly. Um, but we also have George today. George to have a look at those um, global global indices and see how they're looking as we get into the new week. All right, before we go anywhere, of course, it's time to check in on the pound versus the US dollar to see if there is indeed something we can trade as a breakout into the Open of London session. Now, uh, I'll go back through Thursdays and Fridays uh, a little bit later if we've got time. Thursday, I think you would have got a bit of an issue there. I, mine expired. Uh, I'm not sure why that was the case. Obviously, I had the timer set wrong, uh, which saved me because I think you would have got hammered with that one. Yes, uh, sorry, Fridays, however, would have been a corker. Uh, you would have entered short around about there somewhere. I believe stop loss up here. And you would have been in good shape and that one's still running if you were in it. I'm not, of course. Right, today, what have we got? Um, for those of you new to this new system of trading, the uh, London Open, we use the the range of Asia Session. Asia Session begins here with Tokyo Open. And I'll get rid of these white lines so we don't confuse you too much. And right up till now. So the range thus far would be high here and low here. So that's the range that we'd be looking to break. Now, the rule, of course, at the moment is if we are above the center line of that range, now the center line of that range I'll mark for you. Uh, what have we got? We've got 121.49 as the high, and we've got 121.01 as the low, so 48 pips. 24 pips from there, or the halfway mark, would be 21.25, right? 121.25. So that's going to be the entry. And we'd be trading it long because wherever we are in relation to that center line, that is above or below it, we look to trade it in the opposite direction. So if we're below, we look to trade long. If we're above, we look to trade short. So the entry will be here. Stop loss will be here. First take profit will be there. Now, we don't take any money off the table actually at TP1. What we do is simply move our stops to entry. This looks like a heck of a wall to get through at that resistance point, I would have to say. So I'll give you those levels. Now, for those of you who haven't seen this before, this is very much in test mode. So please do not put any meaningful money on this if you are choosing to trade it. That is not a thing. Uh, what I'll be doing is trading it at less than 0.1 of, of, a, of a lot. So... Here we go, we can only go long. Uh, the open is a minute or so away. Uh, I can just put those parameters in anyway. And what, like I said, it'll be 121.25 will be the entry. It'll be a buy order. And again, minimal, minimal money on this. Uh, no break of bar, 121.25, yep. will be the entry, stop loss will be 121.01. Uh, if you're a, um, a bit superstitious about whole numbers, you might want to sneak that below the whole number. And here we go. TP1, as I said, will be the high here at 121.49, let's call it. And we will not take anything off the table. We'll simply move our stops to entry at that point. TP2, we will disable 
and it is a buy. There we go. So we're buying pound versus dollar at the halfway point with our first target. The daily pivot, pretty much, which makes a lot of sense to me. If I were trading the pound versus the US dollar today, mm, it's in a bit of a a bit of a uh, pivot sandwich, really. We've got the, the weekly and daily here, we've got the monthly here. Uh, I can totally see that spending a bit of time in here. I can also see a bit of an end top, maybe forming there. So I don't know if long would be the way I'd want to go here, to be fair. But that's how she sets up. So that's exactly how we'll play it and come back and have a look at, uh, at the result of that or if we even get triggered on that in a little bit of time. Now, those of you who are followers of what I do, you would be aware that we've been in Aussie Swissy short for how long now? We traded this on the weekly chart. We traded that bar. So this is now the fourth week, one, two, three, fourth week that we've been in this trade. And we have been, as you can see, doing absolutely well, everything really, we're going from top to bottom, bottom to top, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now we could have, on Thursday, we were contemplating this, whether we were going to put a hedge in above this bar here. And we decided that there was probably another way to play that. And the way to play that was with Kiwi Yen. So we decided to go long Kiwi Yen above that bar because it made perfect sense. We were coming back or had, we had closed above that uh, trade line. And it very much like a false break was forming. It was also a game changer bar to the high side. Now, I hate getting into the market near the highs, but uh, as a hedge, I, I thought that was perfectly acceptable. And so we did exactly that. That hedge turned out to be pretty, pretty good. And I exited this uh, this hedge trade at 86.13, if my memory serves me correctly. And that, uh, by the look of it at the moment, turns out to be a fantastic exit, I've got to say, just before the high there. Uh, and price has now come back below entry. So I'm very, very happy with that situation. Now, what do we do with Aussie Swiss is the question. Well, it does look bearish today, I have to say. And if you actually got out of this now and you were in uh, Kiwi Yen and in this trade from the get-go, you would now be slightly positive the net result. In other words, if you put exactly the same amount on both trades and got out right now in drawdown on Aussie Swissy, taking into consideration that you've hedged on Kiwi Yen, you would actually be positive. Now, I would highly recommend that to be the case. Why? Uh, because <laughs> you, you don't hedge for no reason. You're hedging to actually save yourself a um, some money in your account, so your capital. And if you're now saying, oh, well, this is going south in a hurry, uh, I think I'll just hang on to this, uh, you may well be back in the position that you were before. So um i can't counsel you any further than that that's entirely up to you the way you play it but for mine i am going to close this position now and if perchance it does go below here and retest the weekly pivot then i might even get back in it but right now i think it's uh, absolutely wise for me because the hedge has cancelled out what uh, down or drawdown I am currently in. So if I close that position right now, I've got a break even situation rather than a loss. So that's exactly what I'm that's exactly what I'm going to do. If I can find a way to do it. Close. There we go. Done. All right, so that turns uh, what could have been a bad result. Well, not a bad result. It was only half a percent, to be honest, but um, it turns a loss into a break-even, net break-even, I've got to say. As I said, I could get back into this. Uh, that's not beyond the realms of possibility, but for now, she's all over Red Rover, and I'm not displeased with the result, frankly. Now, today, what do I see? Well, there were a couple of game-changer bars only 
one of them was Eurocad, and Eurocad I've been a beer for for a <laughs> very long time, and I see no reason to change that apart from the fact that we are not in a selling position, in my humble opinion. Um, we are at a support level, and we have a potential reversal pattern sitting in front of our very eyes. So there's the support level that I'm talking about, and that's bang on where we are. It's also a whole number, pretty much 1.3100, and I can't talk myself into, into going short here. It just doesn't make um, a whole lot of technical sense to me. You can see the double bottom sitting there. You can see a higher low. You can see a higher high. You can see another higher high. Perhaps this is another higher low and goes uh, long. That's fine. I get that, but I'm not trading that either. Uh, but the game changer bar is telling me that this is a sell. So I'm not going to to, uh, to sell into that low. It doesn't make sense to me. And we are pretty much in the middle of the latest range. So that's a no from me on the EuroCAD game changer. Doesn't even give me confidence for a direction, uh, which is normally the case with game changer bars. Kiwi Swissy was the other. And Kiwi Swissy from last week is suggesting that we go long. And I'd be okay with that if we weren't at this support level. You can see the strong support that well, now resistance, hope, well, not hopefully, but potentially now resistance. I see that as a, um, as a stumbling block that I don't really want to trade into, to be fair. So uh, the pullback is a bit more interesting than the bar itself. Um, bit of a bullish engulfing bar, bit of a higher low perhaps, uh, but um, I think it's a bit, bit of a stretch to be trading through that level right now let it break come back then then get there maybe that makes sense but at the moment it's a no from me now there were two uh, game changer plus bars and one of them was pound yen if i can find that there it is pound yen gave us two weeks ago a game changer bar to the high side and pullback last week gave us an inside bar now that is the criteria for trading long. So week before, game changer bar, inside bar, buy there, stop loss there. Now I've done exactly that. And the entry level is at 163.849. I've got no idea why I've got 849, but let's go 163.85. Got a stop loss of 262 pips, so that entire bar. And I've got a first take profit of 205 pips, which is just on the close of that bar there and just before the highs of these two. This is messy, I've got to say. The chart's very, very messy uh, and suggesting that we've got a double top. I don't know that we've got a clear lower high, although you can anticipate that as being a lower high. Um, when I say it's messy, you've got a low test bar, high test bar, high test bar, low test bar. That's what makes it messy for me. So it's not the best. And I don't recommend you trade this at any substantial amount. I've only got like 0.15 or something uh, to, to trade this. So it's, um, it's not a trade that I'm absolutely in love with. The other of the game changer bars is going in the opposite direction. It's pound, sorry, game changer plus bars. It's pound versus US dollar. Oh my God, what a mess that chart is. Hang on a sec, I'll clean it up for you a bit. Uh, that's because we've got all these things on it. Right, hang on. Let me make it a little clearer. So the game changer bar the week before last was off the monthly pivot. And that's uh, generally a nice little, nice little sell sign. Then we got an inside bar, which once again came off that same level. And that's the bar that, is of interest. So um, doing exactly the reverse of what I've just done up uh, with uh, pound yen, I see this as a, a potential sell there, a stop loss there. The thing I don't like about that is, well, it's not so much I don't like. I think I'd rather trade the pound versus the yen than I would against the dollar at the moment, either direction for the dollar. I don't know where the dollar's going at the moment. Could end this retracement that has been on and returned to bullish trend 
uh, that's that's quite possible. If we have a look at the dollar index, uh, which is there, we've been on a bit of a retracement with uh, with the dollar index, understandably because we're at, at a well at a resistance level, but we're now kind of at a support level with trend line and a bit of a horizontal level there as well. So I'm not saying that this uh, won't go short ultimately. What I am saying is at the moment, I don't see that as a sell the dollar uh, situation. So I'd, I'd much prefer to trade the pound long against the end than I would short against the dollar because this is questionable. Questionable, um, it may hang around here. I, I get that if the dollar does rally, the pound will suffer as a result of that, but I just don't think it's clear here where we're going in the short term. There were very, very few other things that I'm looking at at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Ash. G'day, bud. Hi, mate. You, you, you're all right there. I've um, Did you get my message about I've got to leave a bit early. I, I did, mate. You've got to push off. So let's uh, get into what you're looking at. Yeah, apologies for that. I, uh, it was something I totally That's forgot okay. about. Um, now, uh, yeah, so let's start with this and then we will uh, we will look at other stuff. So my uh, the, the call today really is for um, Aussie yen short. And we'll, and we'll talk about the Aussie yen short in a minute. Um, but let's just talk about the data just for now, because um, we've had some data overnight. Not, nothing, nothing huge, but just some data overnight, which would um, which would put the uh, the Japanese yen in relatively good shape here. We got preliminary GDP price index just falling off a little bit. The GDP was a, a bit of a miss, but still in positive territory. Then we jump down to China. Retail sales down two point seven percent. So not only a big miss, but uh, but previous uh, uh, less than the, than the previous number, which may well suggest some consumer slowing down uh, in the world's second biggest economy. Uh, fixed investment as well, uh, slowing down and, and, and a bit of a miss and uh, industrial production slowing down and a miss as well. So few few sort of data points in China, which uh, which have, have put a little bit of strain on the market this morning. Um, we get uh, German WPI as well, which is uh, not only a miss, but uh, but negative and uh, and PPI is, I suppose this is the, the, the one sort of uh, lighter thing. PPIs in, in China are uh, slightly weaker. So there are uh, uh, quite a few numbers here which are suggesting just a bit of contraction could be coming. We, did, we still don't know whether that's going to happen, but there could be some contraction coming. And we know that there will be con some contraction in some aspects of the globe. We don't know where the United States so far is holding up really well, um, but there are other uh, areas of the globe which, uh, which aren't doing so well. Now, if we bring that now into mate, the chart, now, now you tell me. I just closed Aussie Swissy short. Well, I mean, mate, the the, the uh, I I I, I um, <laughs> apologies for not get, getting I'm, to it earlier. I'm a big um, <laughs> the Swissy, the Swissy wouldn't have been my first choice, uh, I guess. Anyway, but let's look at the Aussie yen because the Aussie yen is the uh, is the one that when I uh, analysed uh, the, the, the 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 data this week. The Aussie yen came as, as the weakest currency pair, and it was like a bit shocking and a bit scary, really, when you see that the Aussie yen is on such a tear to the upside. To call it in the opposite direction is not easy, um, but that's what the data is churning out. You know, COT data was suggesting that the, the yen was starting to see some participants coming in on the long side. COT data suggested that the, um, the, the participants were diminishing their longs on the, sh on the long side for the Aussie and adding to some of the shorts. So, you know, uh, it, it, COT data alone suggested that that's the pair to go to. Then you bring in the seasonals, yen very, very strong seasonally through August, Aussie very, very weak. Then you bring the fundamentals, and there was just a few bits and pieces from the Australian economy last week, which suggested just some levelling off while the yen was just, uh, you know, uh, maybe pausing. So, uh, so even the fundamentals kind of didn't uh, didn't really turn the tide in the Aussies' favour for the week. So, Aussie yen is is uh, is is, uh, is is the shorts uh, this week. Yeah, and then, then now, throw China in doesn't doesn't look good for an Aussie uh, rally. Yeah, that didn't help. Yeah, that didn't help. I mean, you see what the uh, the, the the, the reaction to the to the data was from China below both the daily and weekly pivot. Not ideal because really the, the, the trade was here, um, you know, as, as that kind of came through and gave you a lower high on, on the hourly. That was the trade there, maybe, maybe at the low of that bar if you wanted to trade the bar. But there is there is all this is already uh, up and running. But because, you know, the, there is one miss that there's also 
looks like a trend line there because there's one missed and um, on the hourly, you'd, you'd have to flip to the four hourly and see, are there any uh, opportunities coming in there? Well, not yet because the, the four hourly is still kind of in motion. So you'd want to see that, that four hourly come back before um, before uh, you get, get any kind of signal for some downside. But this is the one, mate. And if you look at the actual um, the price action here on the uh, on the daily, Look where we look where we stopped, you know, and, and this is the other sort of like aspect of all this, uh, all this stuff is if you've got cot data and you've got seasonal data uh, suggesting that uh, that the the, 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 the yen is uh, along against the Aussie and then you, you pull up your chart and you're sitting right on resistance. It becomes a pretty screen. You know, you always say that the charts scream at you. Well, mm. the chart didn't have to scream at you. It just kind of had to kind of like give a little extra nudge. And, and, and I think it does here you know, at, at this particular point of resistance. So we got an Aussie yen shorts um, in the uh, in play. Now, the, the only thing that spooks me, and you'll, you'll give me a, a better idea on this as well, a better handle on this yeah. as well, is market sentiment. I mean, this is, oh, this mate, is a, cla- you know what? I, this I is a was classic about to get to metric that. of market sentiment. Yeah, right. yeah totally yeah. right. To- totally right. And I was about to get to that because that's the problem, isn't it? You sort of like, mm. you look at the Aussie yen, and I have to say, when the when I put all the data into the machine and it churned out Aussie in short, I was like, oh god, that's a bit uncomfortable. You know, we, mm. we've got uh, we got this uh, this risk on attitude, you know, across the board. How can the Aussie N possibly be a short? Well, I suppose some of it is because the market might get overextended. The one that I'm really looking at now, the FTSE is, uh, you know, we, we know the FTSE, we know the um, we know the, uh, the, 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 the 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 Nasdaq, all that stuff is pushed to the upside. If you look at the FTSE, this looks like it's in no man's land right now. The closest thing I've got to a, a potential resistance point is there's probably a line somewhere along here. Maybe that could be could be even a little bit higher. Could be a little bit higher. So let's bring that in. Maybe it's there. So we're not quite there yet, but we're we're close. So so somewhere in this area may well uh, provide some some uh, some deeper resistance. <clears throat> FTSE futures just a bit beyond the, uh, the 7,500 level. Then you bring the NASDAQ into play. Is the NASDAQ on a level of resistance? Yeah, it is as well. You know, we, we've got the, the, this area over here. Um, the, uh, the trend line that it's gone through may well be tested. So maybe that the, the NASDAQ is kind of like due a little bit of a pullback into this area to, to decide. But the one is the S&P. The S&P is the spooky one because the S&P looks like OK, yeah, we do have some resistance along here, but it's not meeting the trend line. So I would be more comfortable if the S&P had got here. Now, of course, there's no um, hard and fast uh, law that says the S&P has to go to the, uh, the, the resistance trend line before it reser- reverses. But I'd be more comfortable there. And one of two things can happen. The You've first got that thing that can happen. trade today, too, isn't it? It's the third Monday of the, yeah, third Monday of the month. Uh, the seasonal trades have been, not yours, not your seasonals, but um, Julian's. That's his. Uh, that's his um, third Monday of the month. Long. I'm not sure if we've lost Ash or we've lost. I've lost everything. Hey, George, are you there? I'm here, mate. Uh, how Hello, are you doing? mate. I'm going well, thank you. Um, looks like Ash has crashed. He's actually got to leave early, which is why I haven't um, sort of come to you just yet. Are you okay for time? Yeah, no, I'm fine. No, no rush at all. Uh, just give me a shout when you're ready. All right, mate. Awesome. Uh, right. I'll see if Ash can rejoin us. I can all see right. he's still in the room once. Ooh, there's George. <laughs> Hello, George. <laughs> he's, he's left the room completely. <laughs> How was your weekend, mate? Absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, it's it's been a fantastic three weeks. Uh, done a bit of trade in half days. My uh, eighty-one year old mom was here from Zimbabwe for for almost four four weeks, so it was beautiful time. Oh, lovely! Yeah, yeah and a uh, bit of rugby came up this week. Sorry, guys. Hey, That's okay. Just talking to George about his, he's been playing rugby. Oh, very, very good, mate. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, 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 well. I, I was, I was playing, I, I was playing armchair rugby, and uh, it was yeah. pleasing to see the Q, the Kiwis pull back a draw over these two-day uh, games that we had here. So 
but it was a very nice, nice rugby game on Saturday. So, oh, amazing. Um, I, I missed that one, but I dare say you and Paul Bottrell might have been watching that very closely. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'll hang around wait for Ash to finish. I know he's got to leave. All right, mate. So I'm happy yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. My, my last point, I've got a terrible internet connection at the minute. So it's been two days of, uh, of, of, uh, of, um, of really intermittent internet. So I'll try and get this to, uh, as quickly as possible. Um, the last thing I was going to say was that two things can happen here. Either the trend line comes to price or the price goes to trend line. And what that means is that you could get a situation where you get something like this. Uh, I'll do the bars in white just so they can stay the same color. Um, you could get this where this comes down, comes back up, comes down, comes back up, comes down, comes back up, and and and, and eventually the price, uh, uh, you know, just just runs along these highs and eventually sort of like runs into the trend line. So the trend line can come to price. That's the first thing that could happen, and of course the second thing that could happen is that price may well go to the trend line. So it might, might just, uh, but just pop, pop back to the upside and we get up there again. So I'm looking for that to happen. Now, what that says to me is that the short isn't ready just yet, because if the trend line is going to come to price, that's going to take five, six, seven sessions. If price is going to go to the trend line, that's going to take at least one session. It's going to take at least today before we, we kind of get there. So the short isn't on just yet. But I do think there's a short in this market. Now, those, that data from China isn't enough to go on. Um, and we've got this kind of this uh, anticipation that the Fed aren't going to move more than 0.5 percent, which has made the markets kind of bullish. But, you know, we, we don't know that yet. That was one data point that which suggested yeah, that CPI data was a little bit one. weaker. And, and it's still at 8.5 percent. It's a ridiculous number. Um, so, you know, it, it's really like what's the stomach of the Fed? And they haven't said anything substantiate that, that substantiates the, the market saying that the Fed isn't going to 0.5%. Couple of them have, couple of them haven't. So we haven't heard from Jerome Powell. We haven't heard from any of the big guns. St. Louis Fed's chairman not, not said anything. Chicago, uh, uh, sorry, the Dallas Fed chairman not said anything. New York, none of them have said anything. And, uh, and, and of course, Jerome Powell hasn't said anything. So we are waiting on that and we've got data before that that happens uh, um, uh, in the um, for, for the September meeting. Um, we've got Jackson Hole, uh, which which might turn things around. I'm just looking to see if there's there's any data this week which would um, which would potentially move the market. Um, core retail sales, FOMC minutes. Okay, so that is tomorrow. Uh, sorry, that's Wednesday. The FOMC minutes it might well uh, turn the market one way or the other. So we're looking at Wednesday before we get maybe some further directional bias on this market. Until then, there's a pause with a slight edge to the downside purely because I've got to look at the Aussie yen and say, as you said earlier on, that's my kind of market barometer, and that's telling me that we should be selling the Aussie yen pair. Interesting. So, if we, yeah, I like that because I'm waiting on shorts on Nasdaq. Yeah, so that, me, that, me that too, would suit mate. that narrative. That would suit. That it would. Would you? I mean, your 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 um your uh, setup would be the uh, the cleanest possible and probably the safest way to play it because we should have a little bit more detail and a little bit more certainty if the Nasdaq all of a sudden starts to get below this level here. Um, and then uh, retest the level. You know, if it, if it can get below there and retest the level, then um, then we might well have something a bit cleaner. If it does something like that and comes back up again, then ooh, then we might have uh, we might have something which does. If I can just click off that a minute. There we go. Uh, we might have something which does something like that, comes back up and tests the uh, the trend line, and then. You know, your uh, your idea of, of trading short under this level would make a lot of sense um, yep. to me as well. But that might be, um, and that's, there's loads of room, you know, if that's going to happen, the NASDAQ's coming down to the monthly pivot potentially. So if that was to happen, enough room to kind of take that kind of setup. I wouldn't really want to trade it before that. I wouldn't want to trade it above this trend line. You know, there's no technical kind of reason mm, to do that. That's right. Um, and it could continue to kind of jerk people around a bit. And as I say, if, if trend line comes to price, we could be above this level for a little while, you know, a, a good five or six sessions. So I think.
Doesn't look his best when he's frozen, does he? <laughs> I think we've lost it. We've lost Ash again. Uh, so I, I, oh, there he is. He's the Sorry, mate. Sorry. You're right. Sorry. I, I, I will leave it there. I will leave it there. Just, just uh, I think everybody's sort of like pretty much clear about what I'm thinking. Absolutely. Um, I just want to share this with you before I go to George because that was so close to me trading the NASDAQ this morning. It wasn't funny. It was, it's not a bee's dick in it, fair Ninkum, because this is a game changer bar here. Followed by, if that had closed below, or oh, sorry, if it, its high was below the high of that bar, then that would be a trade. But as you say, very, very, very difficult to trade that short at the moment. And we do have to wait until we come back below that resistance area, I believe, which mm. hope, hopefully doesn't provide support. Well, if you're long the NASDAQ, then by all means, go hard. But as you say, the safest way to do it is wait for that to happen and then get the retest. All right, mate. Go look after Molly and we'll uh, catch up on Thursday. Cool. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Have, you too, mate. Cheers. Cheers, George. Say, George. Cheers, Dick. Uh, tell me more about this rugby game. South Africa were a long way in front, weren't they? Well, no. I mean, uh, so there have been two games last Saturday. Um, you know, South Africa really took it to the Kiwis and, and won uh, pretty decisively. Handsomely, um, yes. And we all wondered what happened to the Kiwis, but uh, they must have had some serious conversations um, mm -hmm. during the week. And when they came out this Saturday, man, were they fighting? Are they hammered, <laughs> did they? So, so they actually, I mean, they, they were up... Uh, I think fifteen to 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 zero at some point. Um, and then, Five you know, zero to zero. Came, yeah, South Africans came back into Ooh. the game, and at some point they took the lead. It was twenty one to twenty, um, and then you know the the Kiwis just really throttled out. It it they won the game, but it it was it was a good game, a really really good game. That's all that counts, mate. Not the results, yeah. how you play the game. That's what I was always told when I was a lad. <laughs> so what about trading you, your dear mum's now departed yes so not, I'm sorry I I <laughs> don't, don't read that wrong she's she's still alive right she's yeah. departed your, your home well I was thinking of the flight departing yesterday yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go so um, now you've got plenty of time to trade right I've got plenty of time to trade and uh, you know really digging into it so what what I thought I mean listening to uh, your guys' conversations, you know, it's, it's really quite interesting. Um, the correlation again between price action and where you guys are seeing things. I've been saying for for quite a while now that uh, we're still in a sell zone, if you like. Um, so I'll just rattle through a few of them. Just listening to to Ash talking about uh, Aussie yen, and I just looked at the Aussie two hundred and again that whole area for me is a is a sell zone now because i'm trading the five minutes um when i when i drill down i look for for opportunities more more short opportunities when they come there's a high probability of them um you know giving me my rewards that i want but this 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 is a sell zone because of this uh, yellow zone here um so i'll just point uh, that out but i'm not Trading the uh, these these pairs here, this uh, these indexes on the right hand side, these four. I'm not trading them on the five minutes um, because I'm I'm seeing a lot more or higher probability on these four on the left. So if we if we just well let's look at uh, actually George, before you, before you do yeah. if you don't mind on yeah, that Aussie okay, yeah. two hundred chart yes. uh, where. The previous long term, well, I'll call it a long term range, what's about seven or eight days range, yeah. has really tried to break out the upside. They just can't get there, can they? They can't break they, out it, of that. They, they can't break above that, you know. So, that mm. horizontal line that I have there uh, is a bear breakout of, of 9th June. So, this, this is where. Uh, the bears broke out beneath this whole pattern. And for the bears to have done that, I mean, that took a lot of strength. If we just been going mm. sideways for a while. 
Um, so the bulls have been trying to break out above that. But I mean, you can see that every time they try, this trading range is just the bears really repulsing them. So it's it would take a lot of strength for the bulls to give us a, a solid bull candle, whatever size above that, and follow through. Then we know that garden strength, but then they're still within this lower high. Um, so even if they manage to get above this, you know, they, they still have to contend quite a bit uh, for, for them to control the market. So this, this just confirms for me that um, there is a higher possibility of a short setting up on the daily, um, which then converts this for me to become one that I trade in the day if I, if I see a setup here. Um, yep, but I actually love that chart. That's saying exactly the same thing to me. Yeah. So so every day I, I just open up with a quick look. I mean, if I was to see, let's say today I was to see, you know, um, or by the time I open up tomorrow, a failed breakout. In other words, a high test candle, bear candle, uh, failed breakout above that. Then definitely I'll switch that to the five minute to see if, you know, the break of the law of, uh, which will be today, I can look for opportunities to sell. So you know, it's, it's definitely on my daily watch list just to see what what to get out of that. Um, I mean, for if you look at the yen, I mean, huge bull breakout above this pattern, above that lower high. If the bulls are able to give us uh, a bull candle, uh, whatever size today, closing above that high. Then on a on a five minute time frame, it would be worthwhile to to see if there's any to look for longs, at least a follow through. Um, you know, it might reverse at the end of the day, but we might have had a beautiful long during the day or a couple of opportunities to go long before it turns. So that that I'll look at again uh, when the day ends to see just just how the bulls have ended up the day there. Um, if we, I mean, all of these, you have, you have a look at them. I'm, I'm bearish. Uh, German 30. Again, just a quick look at the left. I mean, these two bare candles that broke beneath uh, this uh, tight trading range here, very strong breakout. So the bulls, yes, they gave us a, a strong bull candle, but we just ended up in a channel, which no more price action pattern, breakout, spike, pullback channel. But if you look at that channel, you know, the, you wouldn't say the bulls are very strong. It just looks like a, a bull leg in a trading range. So at some point, uh, anywhere within here, you know, the, the bulls are going to fail. So definitely today, um, you know, I'll, I'll open this up shortly. I'm looking for, for opportunities to go short. I mean, there, there's good movement now. Um, when, I, when I look at breakouts, I look for, for pullbacks. So, you know, I'll talk about that shortly. Just look at another one that Ash was talking about, S&P 500. Bulls broke above uh, this lower high, but the breaking above it first with a trading range. Bull breakout, dodgy candle. So that for me is a problem for the bulls. If they were strong, they would need to give us um, um, a, a strong bull candle. Um, so as I said, Ash, you were talking about your setup here, my apologies, where you were saying if, if the high was below this candle, you'd be looking to go short. Mm. Um, for me, that, that candle, that dodgy candle, that uh, uh, it's a failed breakout by the bulls, um, not just of this candle, but of uh, this trading range we had here that led to that bear breakout. And also we come into an area where the bulls are strong, they need to be breaking above that. So definitely um, when I see a follow through candle like that, the bull candle in this kind of area, I'm looking to go short, but on the open of the day, you know, I wanna see if we get an attempt by the bulls to break out above that. Um, if that attempt fails, then we're just creating a tail on the day, on the day, and looking for more opportunity to sell, or we just start off uh, by selling off. So well, let's start with that one as we're talking about that, and I'll look at the uh, German 30 just now. Just put that on the five minute quickly. Mm. 
Okay, so at the open of any doubt, I've been looking to see if, if we break out above that and fail, that's just create a tail on the daily. But we didn't uh, bear candle. Uh, you know, we've been selling off all of these double tops, lower highs, just signs of bear strength. So when I see this breakout beneath the uh, low of the Asian session, I look at the next candle, uh, and that's a problem for the bears. You know, the, you don't want a, a, a you know a, a tail, a, call it low test tail, on a follow through. I'd love to see. Uh, complete candle, whatever size. This kind of candle here as a second one would have been fantastic. But in any case, we have broken below if a very weak breakout, which means I don't trade uh, a pullback down here. I try, I then I have to wait for a test of some sort of that breakout. And then if we do get the test, then I'll go short and stop has to be pretty wide above the trading range uh, at the outset. So looking to go short, but I need uh, to see a bit more price action. Um, if we do pull back, I mean, the good thing about the S&P 500, if you're looking at it in the, in the UK or European session, we've got a lot of time. We do pull back, um, not pull back, sorry, if the market comes back, gives us a double bottom, higher low, you can still trade it, you know, to see what happens up to here, because you still have the US session to come. For more price action. Then the other one, the last one, just have a quick look. I, I spoke about the payment 30, talking about the strength of the base here. I mean, it, when you look at this and you see this gap down on the day, I mean, that's, that's some pretty serious strength. And the pullback didn't really close the gap. So the bulls managed to close the gap, although we went sideways. So you know, it's not like the bulls are absent in the market. What it then means is that you know if 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 they fail, we will have a pretty strong breakout because the bears are really want to just try and push the market down further. So I am bearish. Now this is the present setup. So that's that's the opening candle, doji, uh, which I, I always keep in mind. You know, the first candle of of this particular uh, session. If it's a doji, it means whatever happens, we might come back and just create a trading range for, for this particular session. But we had a bull, uh, a strong bear breakout, outside candle, no problem. Uh, follow through, still have a tail, but uh, not as you know, distinct as the earlier tail. And we go to the measured move of this little trading range here. So again, I'm, I'm still short. So... Let's just check if this is correct. This is the, yeah, so, so that's the law of the earlier session. That's where we broke out. So what I want to see is how we come and test back here. It doesn't have to be perfect. If I get a double top low high anywhere within here, then I'm going to look to uh, carry on the short. So good, good uh, strength uh, by the bears. But I'm not jumping in anywhere here. Um, you know, I, I need to see a pullback. So that's kind of my my thinking process uh, at the moment, mate. Um, mate, um, question. Yes. Um, and I think S and P probably is is the place to go to answer the question right. because we're kind of on exactly the same page. Um, right. When does it change for you? When when do we say okay this and there'll be people looking at the charts going hang on George you're off your rocker because six out of the last eight weeks have been positive we've just closed on the high last week why on earth would we be thinking anything but S and P is going back to I don't know five thousand or wherever wherever it's going what what, what so, changes for you when when would you change your mind okay so I'll change my mind to to start thinking long, is that the question? Yes, mate, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it was so, a bit convoluted, wasn't it? <laughs> well, okay, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I should have guessed, my bias has been short all along. Um, and in fact, let, let, let me just, just start there because my, my short bias is saying we have this trading range here. So this is uh, March to April trading range, you broke out beneath it and that's where we've been operating. So, 
if the bears come start to come down here i'm thinking that the bears will take us all the way down to 3000 uh, 3000 area that's the measured move of that the the inverse of that of course is how do we get to 5000 well again the the determining force is this uh, trading range here if the bulls today would be the trigger if the bulls give us a strong bull candle that closes above the high of this uh, uh, channel, you know, they've been channeling up to come back to the top of a potential trading range. If they give us a high above that, uh, I mean, a strong bull candle above that, then they've given us a high above this level here, which is uh, this area of resistance. They've given us a high above the descending uh, uh, trend line. All they need to do is give us that and a follow through candle tomorrow it, it doesn't have to be of you know an, any huge size but just a, a, a bull candle if we get that then i'm going to start to say okay the bulls are now mastering enough forces whatever pullback we get they want to get to that level and that's really the the, the i think that's that's a trigger in the market if you go um I mean, even if you go up on the on the weekly, if the bulls are able to to get to that level, I mean, they're reversing this, you know, which was where uh, at some point in this particular week, you know, bears came down, bulls tried to pull it back, and then bears eventually won. Now, on a weekly basis, if you look at that, these tails here indicated. Uh, that the bears weren't that strong. It wasn't until we had the pullback and then the acceleration down that the bears managed to give us an extra candle, uh, you know, below this level. So this price action here, if the bulls can reverse that, which will start off on the daily and give us a, a, a measured move, will give us the, the break this week above these levels that we're talking about. Goal, I think. That's where they want to go and then reverse everything that has taken place uh, so far since the beginning of the year. But it's really going to come down, um, you know, what's, what's, what's happening day by day? Do they have enough strength? They continue to, you know, bull, bear, dodgy, bull, bear. The bear still have an opportunity to just say, okay, fine, this is just a pullback, double top. Now let's, uh, let's accelerate down. So the deciding factor is here. I think we, we write at this confluence of factors that will make a big difference uh, to the structure of the market. Yes, I agree with you 100%. I think um, we are at an inflection point on not just... It, it, in fact, you know, the market often is um, binary and I think we're pretty much at that point where it's either up or down and we're getting to that point where we're going to find out which way that is and... Uh, and I think the S&P is certainly in that category. Um, the world, of course, and the markets will decide, not me. Sadly, <laughs> I wish I had control of that. That would be very, very nice. But unfortunately, it isn't the case. <laughs> All right, mate. So the bear becomes a bull at uh, above those levels as, as long as you get follow through. And if we get a false break, then that's probably the best case scenario because that goes with your, your short bias and it's going to give you the best possible price, All right? Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, we just keep tracking it. Uh, so, so again, the key levels to watch out for is the high and low of, uh, of Friday. Um, and, and, you know, if you just leave the market, you come back and wait to see what happens there and look for trades uh, instead of worrying about picking up uh, some rewards during the day. Awesome, mate. Is there another game, South Africa and New Zealand, or was only a two, two test series? No, it, it was only two tests, and uh, I remember seeing these guys at the airport. Man, I mean, you think the guys are big on TV when you see them? <laughs> they're, mass they're massive, aren't they? These guys are huge, man. <laughs> yep. but, uh, you know when the basketball team's in town as well, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you're looking up into the sky. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not a short man by any stretch of the imagination, but yeah, <laughs> wow, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Where they're playing. <laughs> Indeed. Halfway to heaven.
<laughs> yeah. All right, mate. We'll let you go. Thanks for your patience today and uh, look forward no to catching problem, up bro. next Monday. What have you got on Wednesday this week? Uh, this Wednesday is uh, live trading profits, 45 minutes, uh, 9.30 GMT. So look forward to seeing all the guys there. All right, mate. Thanks, George. Have a great week, mate. Take care. Thanks for having me on the show. Take care. Man. More than welcome. Bye-bye. Righto, guys. Um, we've lost Ash. We've lost George. And now we're going to go back and have a little bit of a recap on a couple of things. Pound versus the US dollar, number one. Of course, that's where we started the session. And go ahead, Lewis, mate. I, I did see your message there earlier, but we've just been chatting away and I didn't quite get to you. Hey, there you doing? I haven't seen you for ages. And I hope the trading's going well, of course. Um, pound versus the dollar. Right. This is why we've got a red line. That's a stop loss, of course. Uh, okay, so we've got an entry here going long. We've got our first take profit here, which is a not what's a bit of a mis- misnomer, really. It's not a take profit area at all. Uh, <laughs> lucky didn't lose. Right, good. Um, yes, we will only take... Uh, We'll take nothing off the table. We just move our stops to entry. Now, if this does go, and I didn't explain that, and if you're looking for uh, explanation on how we actually trade this at the moment, we've tried lots of different versions of how to trade this uh, London Open with the pound versus the dollar. This is the latest of them. And basically what we do is find the range since Tokyo Open. That's Tokyo Open there. So the range from Tokyo Open to the London Open session is this one here, high, low. Then we find the midpoint of that and we put our entry at the midpoint. Now, if price is below that midpoint prior to London Open, then we buy at the midpoint. But if price was up here prior to London Open, we would sell at the midpoint using this is our first take profit and this is our stop loss. So the reverse of what we've got at the moment. That's the current system and management of that. Once we get past CP1, we're two and a half to one. Once we hit two and a half to one, we just close everything. Why two and a half to one? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, it's because uh, when Ash and I did our research on this oh, many moons ago now, some 12 months ago probably, we found that that was the sweet spot for any breakouts, two and a half to one. So we're sticking with that until proven wrong with that particular scenario. So that's the current system. And question has been posed to me a few times, when do you cancel the order? Well, because it is a breakout, uh, there's really no need to cancel the order. You just leave it there. But I think it's always a good practice. If it hasn't triggered by the end of day, then that's probably when you, you need to be you need to be cancelling the order. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I generally close things at end of day if they haven't triggered. There's a couple of reasons for that. And one of them, in particular, if you're buying, you can get completely overrun by the spreads that widen dramatically at change of day. So if we, even if we were here, right, and price has not reached our, our entry point, the spreads come out so wide, you know, 20, 25 pips. It's crazy what happens there. So yes, we need to have a new version of the, of the pound breakout trade, Lewis. And I hope, hope you just got picked that up. Uh, exactly how we're doing it but i'll do it again on thursday so um if you're in on thursday i'll repeat it of course so you don't want to get caught with that with an entry in the market or an order in the market just prior to changeover because you can be within 10 pips happened to me i won't say numerous times but on a few occasions has it has happened to me and it's costly very very costly um because the market goes against you and you shouldn't have been taken into the trade. Very, very frustrating. Uh, so be aware of that. That's one of the reasons. The other is if the market hasn't gone there in that period of time, 
chances are then there's something else going on around the place. So don't pay too much heed to that. Uh, repeating that, uh, for those of you who were in the Aussie Swissy trade, I have closed that and I've closed it in a losing position. Why, you might ask? Uh, it's because I traded a hedge on it with Kiwi Yen last week. So I've taken profit on the hedge up here, got out of the trade at 86, 16, 13, one of those, something like, I can't remember exactly, 86, 13, I think it was. Um, so to take advantage of that hedge and not try and make a winner out of it, uh, which can be a very, very tempting thing to do at times, but it's also a very dangerous thing to do. If you're prepared to put, if you're prepared to play a hedge, you've got to accept that what you were actually seeking at the time was to get the loss either minimal or zero, which is exactly what happened. So we got Kiwi Yen to a, a profit level. We got Aussie Swissy bang on the on the weekly pivot to exactly a break even level. So between the two trades, it's break even. And that's more, I'm more than happy with that. Now, like I said before, I could re enter this short Aussie Swissy because I still think that's the way to go. But I'm nowhere near as confident as I was in the first place because of all this procrastinating around here. It really does and potentially has changed the dynamic. After all, you know, we've got a, a bullish engulfing bar sitting here. We've got a higher high, a higher high, and potentially a higher low you know, on a macro scale, that, that's a weekly chart. So there's no reason to think this can't go long. And it's tried, it's tried to go short, doesn't want to do anything. So I'm more than happy to be out of both trades at break even. Uh, that's brought that up to date. Uh, one thing we haven't looked at today is the euro, which is the one thing that I kind of hung my hat on. And it's how I pretty much learnt the skills of trading 30 minute charts. When I began trading, you know, 15 odd years ago, um, I I still would love to trade this on a 30 minute chart, but I simply can't spend the time in front of the charts that I need to to, to enable that to happen. Uh, but I'll be back. Don't worry. As soon as I return to trading full time, this will be my go to. It's exactly where I'll start and probably end my day. So the 30 minute chart at the moment always is intriguing and often, more often than not, gives us an edge. Now, the edge that we have here, and it's still existing today, is an untested daily pivot. Now, um, I don't need to convince anybody who's been around me or ATW for a long time uh, that the daily pivot is tested, in particular on euro dollar, 70, 75% of the time. So why trade against that would be my question. So what I'm looking for today is best case scenario, this would be the best and safest trade setup, would be priced to get back above that trade line, come back and retest it. And I could then enter above that bar and get my profit at daily pivot. So it would look something like this. Uh, if I can get my pen working, that is, there we go. So I want price to do exactly as it's done. It's broken that level. It's now consolidating here. Be even pretty cool if it came down to here. Um, but I, I'd accept right now if this candle were to go back above the trade line and come back and retest it. The weekly pivot is a bit of an issue because you don't really want to trade into an untested weekly pivot without taking profit. And if you get an entry there, you can certainly take profit there, no question. Um, you may do, if that's the case, you could even trade through the daily pivot. But the real number that's working for you is this, an untested daily pivot. So no candles being near the daily pivot at the moment. And we know that 70 to 80% of the time that happens. It may not happen at all. Unfortunately, we're in bed, but that's the number that you're playing with. So trading in the opposite direction gives you a win percentage probability of somewhere between 20 and 30 percent does that make sense the answer should be no so you don't want to trade short here euro dollar you want to trade long and that would be the ideal entry point take the first profit there to be safe but this 
this scenario here, the break and retest of the weekly pivot, is a confidence booster, if you like, because it proves that the weekly pivot is vulnerable. So I'd be prepared to trade through there and get some money in the bank just before the daily pivot. And that would give you a pretty re pretty good reward to risk on a 30 minute chart. Your risk probably going to be about 15 pips, maybe 10 to 15 pips. And your reward's going to be maybe 30. So, you know, that makes perfect sense to me. In terms of the bigger picture, um, and we don't really need to worry about the bigger picture in this microcosm. Because if we're thinking, okay, this is a really, really bearish um, currency pair and has been for the longest time, then the only reason, the only thing we can do is trade short, right? That's fine if you're trading on a daily chart or a weekly chart or maybe even a four hour chart. But in this little microcosm, it doesn't really matter because it's only noise at the end of the day in the bigger scheme of things. So if I have a look at that, that macro picture, you can see a completely different viewpoint, but it's not relevant really if you're trading a 30 minute chart. So the viewpoint I see is break of this 103.70 level and a retest of that suggesting that there's still shorts on the table. Doesn't, doesn't matter, don't care. On a 30 minute chart, I see resistance here. We've come off the resistance, don't care, because really we've retested the top of that range at the end of the day and may still go that way. But here's the daily pivot. It's not going to matter what happens if we hit the daily pivot. It can go down there, don't care. So, you know, when, when we say the trend is your friend, that's absolutely true in some cases. It's not true of all cases. And for that reason, I have absolutely no no problem at all trading against the trend if the trend is short here which it really is ultimately on the bigger picture so that was a long way of saying that uh, i want to trade this long today but i want to see exactly what i need to see before i can and you, you have to have that license as well yes it's okay to trade against the trend but you have to have a reason to trade against the trend untested daily pivot is one reason but you've got to have a setup to do that as well you don't just say okay untested daily pivot we're going long here enter it market no that won't work but i have the setup as well that's euro dollar uh spoke about the s p with um and by the way if anybody's uh familiar with the atw position size calculator which i think is the atw position size calculator that i actually found in navigator um, this morning, can someone tell me how to get rid of it? Because I've got no idea. I've tried objects. I've tried. It's not on objects. Doesn't exist. I've tried expert advisors. It's not an expert advisor. The bloody hell is it? How do I get rid of it? Maybe you don't, if you've never even seen, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's beside the point. But the S&P 500 now, as I said before, uh, there is a, uh, a system that the ATW team uses because it has a 90% win rate. And that is to trade the S&P 500 along on the third Monday of the month, which is this Monday today now i don't i've never traded that but i'm a bit crazy because i haven't traded that why i'm crazy because if it hits 90 percent win rate what the hell am i doing not trading it duh that's just no brain at really the end of, but you've got to know the criteria and the criteria is you've got to and, and it's crucial that you get this right i and, and please if there's anybody in the room who trades this let me know if i'm wrong I think the rule is you enter at open. So if you entered at the open today, you'd be in drawdown, that's for sure. But if the rule says you enter at the high or close of the pre of Friday bar, different story, you wouldn't be in that trade. 
So I, I need to know that rule, uh, and I don't know that rule. And I think you've then got a $25 stop loss, and then you close at the at the first positive open. I think that's pretty much that part of what I've got right. But I'm in disagreement with that today, which is why I'm going into that. I don't normally mention that, but that's why I'm going where I'm going. I'm in disagreement with that today because of what George and I spoke about. But I can see how this could absolutely go just a little bit further. And the guys have already spoken about that. And if it does go that little bit further, then the third Monday trick actually would trick, I shouldn't say that, the third Monday trade will actually work. I suppose that confluence area could be in there somewhere, but it's a bit messy through here. I think that's more like the level, and we've actually been through it. Um, I, I'm just really keen to play a false break of this area. And like I said before, to George, if we have indeed broken out of that horizontal level, then an entry under here makes perfect sense to me. Target down here, or, or at least a take profit area down, down here. That would be an early way to trade it. But I'm, you know, I'm just really throwing that out there before I before I look at look at it. But I'm more than keen to trade um, anything that's in indice based short at the moment because we've had this nice little rally. I think this is more a short covering rally than anything else. So I'm just waiting to get into those trades short. Got to get back under here in some cases, but again. That breakout candle, uh, to my mind, is probably where the buyers are wrong. And if that's the case, you went to here. The monthly pivot's a bit of a worry because it hasn't been closed below. So it's just a patience game on all of those at the moment. And that's the way it is, guys. Um, I'm also keen still on Aussie Kiwi short. Now, this was a game changer bar nearly but not quite. And I know there are a few of you in the room who probably got no idea what I'm talking about when I'm talking about game changer bars. Let me enlighten you. A game changer bar or a candle, if you like, is a candle and it can be both ways. And I'll explain that in a second. A candle whose high is higher than the previous day or week. Don't do this on a 30 minute chart, but higher than the previous day or week and closed on or near its low, which despite this being a green candle, it's closed near its low. So that's a game changer bar for me. Going the other way, a candle or bar whose, close, whose low is lower than the previous day or week and closes on or near its high, which is this one that's clearly done. And you can see why I like to trade them. And in this instance, it hasn't gone too far, but there's another one sitting there right now. The problem I have with this is, is kind of twofold. One is that we've got, <clears throat> pardon me, a high test bar, a low test bar, and a high test bar. That's something that's screaming at me. This is a market that has no direction, doesn't know where it's going. So for that reason, uh, I don't like it too much. The reason I do like it, is because we've had, and this is a weird market structure, I've got to say, but I'll show you anyway. Actually, I'll use my pen. It's a lot easier and quicker. So you've got this kind of thing going on where I can't see a clear range. What I can see is an ascending triangle. Now, if that's the case, and I'm... I have got a vivid imagination, but if that's the case, then this has been broken once to the high side, false break, twice to the high side, false break, three times to the high side, question mark. Don't know if it's a false break yet, and that's what's hindering this decision process. If that was a third false break in a row, then I would suggest to you that this would break. That's right, looks. It's the three amigos. This would break to the low side. 
but I'm not there yet. And that's that's the problem. Very tempted to trade that bar. And if it was fitting the criteria of a game changer bar, which it isn't, and I'll show you why. Because the high of the previous week is higher than the high of last week. Reverse that. So if that was the high and that was the high, then I would be willing to trade that short. But, you know, sometimes it's a game of micro pips. And, you know, there's a few pips different here. So if it's it's either black or it's black and white here, it either quacks like a duck and walks like a duck and therefore it's a duck. Um, but this only quacks like a duck. It doesn't walk like a duck. So for that reason, I'll stay out. Um, this candle is interesting. I may look to pick that up tomorrow on a completely different scenario because as a slingshot aficionado, my system, uh, that would then become a slingshot pattern that I could trade. I'd like to see it close up here on the monthly pivot though before that would be the case because that gives me extra insurance that if the bulls are indeed coming back into the picture, they're going to take this and, and test these highs. If that's not the case, then I would suggest that my three little Indians or three amigos will play out and will go short here, probably down to that level. So that's kind of where I'm at uh, with pretty much Aussie Kiwi that I've been stalking for weeks and weeks and weeks and just can't get a setup out of it at the moment. That's very near and I'm <laughs> very keen to place a trade there, but uh, tomorrow, Oh, sorry, that's a weekly chart. Tomorrow may be a different story if I do get that bull bar that I'm looking for because it's the same thing on the daily. This actually looks good for a trade now, short, uh, but I've got to wait for the daily to close. If it closes like that, guys, uh, I will be placing an order underneath that in the morning, taking profit probably here and then making the trade safe and thinking that reversal is on. Righto, folks, um, we've pretty much run the gauntlet today, pretty much out of time. Uh, Aussie Swissy, let me check on that, see if I've done the right... Oh, look, I've done the right thing. I don't care what it does from now. Um, if it goes to hell in the handbasket, I hope it gives me an opp another opportunity, like a retest of the weekly pivot right now would be interesting with a bull bar. Um, but I'm more than happy to have done what I've done with the um, with the hedge on Kiwi and... Pound, pound US dollar, um, like I said, uh, close that before the end of day would be the best best result if you don't get an entry. Uh, you know the parameters around which we're working with that. And that's pretty much all I've got, unless that euro dollar sets up, of course, which would be um, quite, quite enticing if it does. Don't forget that one there as well. Thank you for your company, folks, uh, for this version of Trading Buddies. Thank you for being our Trading Buddies. I didn't see too many questions in the box. Please feel free to, to post them. We're more than happy to uh, to answer any questions you've got. Maybe you've got some trading ideas. Uh, we're more than happy to go, go with that as well and have a little conversation around uh, what you might be seeing. I think Simon's next back, uh, back next week with um, crypto. Um, interesting to see his thoughts on what the crypto world is telling us at the moment, if it's tradable even, is it going to go that way or that way? No idea. I just hope somebody trades it for me the right way. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, oh, awesome, Lewis, awesome. Christmas in Tassie, what could be better? Lovely oysters, lovely lobsters, lovely fish. You bet. All right, mate, hey, happy, happy, all good. Right, folks, uh, we're out of here. Thank you for your company once again. Thanks for being our trading buddies. Uh, we'll do it all again on Thursday. Hope you have a great week. In the meantime, uh, I'll update those um, people in the Telegram group. If you want to be a member of the Telegram group, I think you've got to send an email to contact at Actions to Wealth and request that. Uh, I'll update any trades that I take in there. And, of course, any updates on the pound versus the dollar and the euro dollar if it sets up. Have a great week ahead. And thank you, Lewis, you too, mate. Uh, we look forward to your company on Thursday.